Alright. Today this is just kind of an off-the-cuff type of video. I wanted to talk about uh, the only two theory or analysis mistakes that I've ever made with Valheim. And luckily I didn't upload it because I would have had to make corrections and delete videos, but I originally thought that Serpent Scale Shield was going to be the best shield in Valheim. That was my, my, that was my theory, at least Valheim up to Yaglith, uh, the initial release last February. I looked at it, I saw that it had, what, like, 105 block uh, w when maxed out at the time, uh, and it had, and it still has an obscene durability maxed out. You can see uh, 350, uh, let's scroll over a little bit, 350, and I looked at that and I said, hey, that seems really good, right? That seems really, really amazing. And, you, you know, you look at all the effort that you go through to get the Serpent Scale Shield. Like, okay. I gotta have a good bow. You know, you want that long ship, ideally. And then we have to go out to Leviathans. Mind the chitin off their backs, which is sort of risky as it is. Come back home, make an abyssal harpoon, go back out to sea, which always has a risk of fog and running into like planes and things. Find a serpent, which is most likely, you know, it's, it's the spots that you will find serpents are more likely to get them at night. Or in a storm, which is even more dangerous. And then drag the serpent back to land, which is more dangerous at night because more enemies spawn. And then you gotta <laughs> beat the shit out of the serpent while it's uselessly slithering about on shoreline. And ultimately, this is a very satisfying uh, ordeal and operation. And you end up with the materials. Namely, the Serpent Scales that will allow you to craft Serpent Scale Shield. And I thought, wow, this journey, this big everything, this, this like hidden aspect to this game that you like could go the entire game without doing. It's going to reward me with easily the coolest looking shield. I love the look of kite shields. I love the sort of golden-like uh, rounded nub in the middle of it uh the actual look of the scales are beautiful i love how it looks on a character i love how it looks hung up and my biases took me towards the wrong conclusion that it was going to be really good and it was just okay the serpent shield now and how the serpent shield used to be was a niche transitional option that you had and have so how it used to be was it was really good when you had it in the mountain age brought it up into the mountains used it to save your ass against stone golems early that's it you know now i'm good enough where i can just dodge roll or parry stone golems even when they were bugged and recovering from stagger, I was still good enough to prepare myself for that and parry them again right away and then lead the assault, stagger lock them, destroy them with the iron mace. You know the drill. So the serpent scale shield became irrelevant in that case. And so, they changed it. They made it lower block value, however, resistant to pierce. 
And now, not only is this good to have, or so I thought, good to have really early for the swamps because of Draugr archers and star Draugr archers, but also good for the plains because Desquitos, you've got pulling spear throwers, all of which really fantastic to have pierce resistance for. But this came with Hearth and Home, and Hearth and Home also brought the root set and the root harnesk, which allows you very easily to tank outright piercing damage to the point where you can ignore those threats in the swamps and plains that I was talking about almost outright and just bonk them, take them out, no issue. At which point, I'm very confused. I don't really know why the developers took this route on making one of the most hard to get, probably the hardest to get, shield in this game. Easily the hardest to get shield in this game. And very subjective, I know, but the coolest looking shield and just overall item, I think, in the whole game. Serpent Scale Shield. I love hanging these up at my base, in my fancy rooms, what have you. Love them. However, the mechanics don't reflect the design and the struggle. The questing and the effort that you took to get there and acquire and fully upgrade this weapon or shield. Because you have the root harnesk, you have other ways of dealing with these piercing threats via weapons it's like at gear, you bow down with frost arrows, pulling spear throwers, uh, wear the new Fenris armor and really just outspeed, outspace them all. It became, once again, mechanically irrelevant. Now, you can, of course, play with it with your playstyle. Uh, however, this becomes a manner of a subjective interest rather than an objective incentive. And I would much prefer the effort put into it to be reflective with the quality, the raw quality, not subject to anybody's tastes, just incredible quality of the item. I want this Serpent Scale Shield to be not the best thing since sliced bread, but one of the best things. It just has to be a side grade, and I know that Iron Gate can do side grades really well because you look at the light armor sets many people me included were running into planes with troll armor and padded helm or before the padded helm troll armor drake helmet i was running into the frost cave first frost cave i went into uh now that i know that the cultists steal fire with troll set drake helmet or troll set Iron Helmet, maxed out. And with proper skills, the shields, good weapons, uh, spacing positioning, using stagger, frost arrows, the frost nur, and all sorts of debuffs that overlap, we were able to effectively maintain a low move speed reduction. So we're quick, and we're also taking out the enemies not taking too much damage in the process. And they added on to that the root set and then the Fenris set. And the root set and the Fenris set, I can't really say that 
one of them is better than the other. There are different players who would want different things, and then there's a mixed set where, just like where you'd want padded helmet with troll set, there's also the mixing of padded helmet uh, with root harness and Fenris pants, or you could go Fenris helmet, root harness, Fenris pants. Uh, you could also just do full root set, full Fenris set, and all of these, every one of these is planes optimal. Absolutely. And the fact that we have so many different combinations that we could go for just proves without a doubt that Iron Gate know what they're doing when they make side grade. So what is up with the Serpent Scale Shield being mechanically irrelevant? I don't know what is going on. I think that something so beautiful that you put so much effort into, and I know I'm sounding kind of repetitive now, but I think it should look good, and I don't just have these criticisms without construction. I think I have an idea and little tweaks around the edges of my idea where this can be fixed. I think the Serpent Scale Shield, and I have the Silver Shield up right here so that I can demonstrate why my fixes could work. Uh, I, I think the Serpent Scale Shield can and should be uh, patched yet again and updated. Uh, most of the properties can be the same. So the block armor, even though it's on par with Silver Shield, can remain the same. Uh, durability, super high, can remain the same. Crafting elements can remain the same. Same with the forge level and all of this stuff, block force, yada yada. Movement speed, I think, should be reduced to 10%. So, this would have it represent a, uh, a little uh, quicker play style, uh, which is just better at positioning and closing down on enemies, single player and multiplayer, but it's still slower than the equivalent Silver Shield by 5%. And 5% is pretty, pretty uh, big for speedy characters. So the root set, the entirety of the root set, harness and pants will slow you down 4%. Uh, wearing the shield will slow you down an additional 5%. And then with the addition of the Serpent Scale Shield, that will set you at a uh, total of, what is that? You got root 14%. And if you have a weapon on hand, that's 19, or no, yes, 19% movement speed reduction, which is pretty large. Like that's, uh, you, you are just locked out of strafing and auto dodging a lot of planes to your enemies by doing this. You have to sprint. You have to defend with the shield, which is what makes uh, this threshold so good. So the specific thresholds that I'm talking about are, well, to name a very obvious example that I've done before, is locks walking. Locks, because their speed has been buffed since Hearth and Home, if you walk away from them, with 9% or less movement speed reduction, they will never hit you, ever. If you walk just straight back from them, they will never, ever hit you. You don't have to dodge. You don't have to sprint. You don't have to block. You don't have to parry. They won't, they won't hit you, and you can just counter and then continue to lock, walk back, and you can counter, and you can do whatever sort of attacking play style that you so please because they won't hit you. Having this combo, just just a shield out. Like, let's say you have like a, a weapon shield. Like, okay, you got your ten percent. You can't escape. But furthermore, it would be a lot easier. To sprint in short bursts and get to where you need to be, position yourself very well, perhaps if something else is attacking you with the locks. 
Maybe a Deskito has come by, which is oh, just a terrible encounter. I hate Lox plus Deskito. Uh, I also hate Lox plus Fulling, except when you're Lox walking. But it is doable with uh, Weapon plus Shield. You know, if you're having a parry shield, you parry uh, like the locks, and then you go take out the uh, other little enemy, and then you go deal with the locks. It is not very doable with tower shield. It is just slow. You're going to get surrounded. It's going to be a terrible time unless you're playing multiplayer, which I recommend you do anyway with Tower Shield or Tanks. But, you lower that to 10%, all of a sudden, you, you go with the Serpent Scale Shield in the planes, you have this encounter, you have a fighting chance. You have a legit fighting chance in that hellish planes encounter. Not only that, but it still represents... And in between, at 10% movement speed reduction, for kite shields, power shields, and standard shields, like uh, uh, round shields, as they call it. So it still has this weird in-between sort of third tier option, uh, and it still carries this uniqueness to it at 10%. I think the resistant to pierce can stay. But I also think that this weapon, oh, let's, come on. Don't don't do that. This 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 item, the shield. Serpent scale shield should be you should be able to parry with it. I think you should be able to parry. I think you should have a 1.5 parry modifier. I do. Uh I think Tower shield, this is this is a kite shield, not as much tower shield. And this will make it still a side grade because the move speed reduction is higher than silver shield. This, you'd want this on some builds, and then you'd want this on some builds in some areas. So it still retains its niche. And Silver Shield still retains its niche. And we have a proper side grade. Now, after all of this, I still don't think it's worth all that effort other than the aesthetics. So what do I suggest now? I suggest, and I know this is going to be a royal pain in the ass to code. I think that the Serpent Scale Shield should have a unique parry where you are somewhat dragging the enemies and off balancing them to the left of you instead of pushing them back a little bit i think they should go a little bit to the left of you and sort of stumble to the left uh what this means is that you will have more uh more thought to put into multiplayer positioning so right now the most common multiplayer positions is uh just full frontal and sandwich. So it's just everybody surrounding the enemies, ganging them, destroying them. Or you have a couple of people and we're just slightly spaced in sort of like a pole positioning north and south pole directly 180 degrees across from an enemy. And then one person makes a hit or a staggered hit, maybe an accurate middle mouse or a crystal battle axe poke. And then the other person comes in with uh, just a huge strike to finish the enemy off, or a huge chain of strikes. So that could be Crystal Battle Axe regular chain, which is normally very slow. That could be also the uh, Black Metal Sword with its insane reliable damage per second. Uh, and then also what's good in the sandwich formation is hits which normally have a lot of knockback which have some sort of greater effect to them so namely the frostner if you have two frostners not only are you basically playing ping pong uh with the poor fullings but 
especially on two star fullings, you're getting frost more and more and more and more on them. And now, what parrying and pushing an enemy to the side would do, instead of being able to have this back and forth ping pong, now we have to think about formations. And this really allows the Crystal Battle Axe to shine and the Frost Nerd. But that is also a, another change that I would make to the Serpent Shield Scale Shield, which I'll get to in a moment. So nudging an enemy off to the side would mean that you'd have a, uh, a sort of like an H2O formation where you have this... Uh, uh, if you you know what the uh, H2O, the water molecule, looks like, it's sort of like a triangle. So you'd have two allies, you and a friend, next to each other, separated a little bit at the base. And then you'd have the enemy. The enemy would go towards Serpent Scale Shield Guy. Serpent Scale Shield Guy would parry them, knock the enemy to the side, to the left, and this is where the other person would capitalize... Namely, the Crystal Battle Axe, because Crystal Battle Axe players in multiplayer it really, really benefits from being in this mid-close formation and positioning, where you are uh, close, but not too close. So you're able to space well with the medium length of the Crystal Battle Axe, and uh, the aggro is more likely to get onto the, uh, uh, the other player first. So the other player is able to uh, do something, whether that's parry or block or get uh, any sort of stagger or big hit on the enemy, and then you're able to just start up your long chain, get huge damage, and just stagger lock with your friend. Very satisfying style of play. Uh, that just makes that even more viable. And I think that's something that's uh, relatively underrated that should have more love. Uh, something that I also want Serpent Scale Shield to have is wet immunity. If you're wearing the shield, or if it's on your back with the R key, I would love if this item gave you wet immunity. This would allow for better exploration. It would be thematically appropriate. You'd be able to uh, swim more and get better swimming levels. Uh, it would encourage uh, aquatic combat, which, like lore-wise, like rope, like almost a uh, RPing. You're like the uh, the physical, metaphorical representation of a serpent in the water. You're able to onslaught enemies in the water and that makes uh the frostner even cooler because now with the frostner plus serpent scale shield you are able to do amazing water damage and i think that uh even though the frostner didn't need a buff like this i think it's warranted because the water aspect of the Froster goes over so many people's heads because it is so situational. So, so, so situational with frost damage in general. It's, I think something like this should have a, uh, uh, a niche mechanical sort of nudge of encouragement. And I think it would make a lot of people very happy. Like, like, I know people have been looking for some sort of way to be wet immune for a while. Uh, I think this would just be a really cool way to top off some one of the hardest items that you can get in Valheim and uh, make it beloved by everybody in the community. So there, there's my overall fix. It would be allow a 1.5 times parry. Uh, make the parry unique, nudge off to the left instead of straight back. Reduce the movement speed reduction from 15 to 10%, and then give it wet immunity. Uh, maybe you could have it so that like the benefit, certain benefits only apply, like the wet immunity 
uh, only applies once you max out the shield. Uh, I don't know. That's that's up to the 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 devs. Should they even listen? I I know that they have their own ideas, but they are open to suggestions. So uh, I hope you guys like my idea, and I'll see you guys some other time.